Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on calculating correlation. When we calculate a correlation, uh, we are calculating the correlation coefficient or what we refer to as Pearson's correlation coefficient or Pearson's R. So that's what we're going to be calculating here with this example that I've already provided for us. You can see that uh, we have two variables here that we're going to be correlating or trying to find the relationship of. We have X, which is the number of hours studied for an exam, and then we have Y, which is the exam score. So what we're really trying to do is determine whether or not there is a relationship between how many hours a student studies for an exam and then the result they get on the exam score. You can see within our data set here, or the table that I have provided, um, that I have listed out all of the students pretty much just by a number, so 1 through 10. So here, in this case, we have 10 students. So I will go ahead and put up here at the top that our n is equal to 10. Our x values, as we can see listed here, are the number of hours studied for the exam. Our y values are also listed, which are, of course, the exam score. And I've already calculated all the numbers we'll need to put into our correlation uh, equation. I have calculated all of the xy's and summed those up. I have summed the x's, the y's individually. Um, and you can see down here at the bottom that I've also calculated the mean and st standard deviation for both x and y. So we have all of the information we need. Now we just have to plug everything in and do our calculations. So starting up here, you can see that we have our equation for R, which looks more complex than what it really is. Taking it piece by piece, we can start to plug in all of the items that we've already calculated. So starting off with our first section, 1 over N minus 1. N in this case is the number of subjects or participants that we have. And we have 10, so it would be 1 over 10 minus 1. So that's our first section on our numerator. Next, within parentheses, we can see that we're going to be doing two major actions. The first one is the sum of xy. So what this means is that we take the sum of all of the xy's multiplied together and add them together. So that's what this 3939 is. It is the sum of all of the xy's. Okay? So the sum of xy, in this case, is 39, 39. And we'll subtract from that our next piece in the parentheses, which is n times the mean of x times the mean of y. So the first number, n, again, this is the number of participants or subjects, which we've already calculated, is 10. And we're going to multiply that by the mean of x. And if we look down here within this table, you can see the mean of x is 4.7. So we'll multiply 10, or n, times the mean of x, which is 4.7, which we need to multiply now by the mean of y. So looking back at our table, we can see that the mean of y is 79.9. So 79.9 will be our third number there. So this is the, the whole numerator for this equation, so quite a few numbers here. Okay. And we'll reduce that down in our next step. Now, in the denominator on the bottom of our equation, you can see that we have the s of x and the s of y, which means that we will be looking at the standard deviation for both x and then multiply that by the standard deviation for y. So looking at our table again, we can see that the calculated standard deviation of x is 2.1628. We'll multiply that by the standard deviation of y, which according to our table is 11.5706. You can see where when I do my own calculations, I try to take it out to four decimal places so that we don't get into too much of rounding errors. Okay, So now we can reduce this down. So starting with the top, we have 1 over 10 minus 1, which is 9, within our parentheses leave 39, 39 the same for now. And we'll multiply out 10 by 4 by 0.7 times 79.9. And when we multiply those three numbers together, we get 3755.3. So that would all be within parentheses. And then on the bottom, 
multiplying 2.1628 by 11.5706, we get 25.0249. So now we just need one more thing within parentheses that we need to simplify in the numerator. So we still have 1 over 9, and that will be multiplied by the difference of 39, 39, and 3755.3. So if we subtract those two numbers, we get 183.7. And then that still is over the 25.0249. So we're getting closer. Now on the num or in the numerator or on top, all we need to do is multiply by 1 ninth, which really means that you're dividing by 9. So it should be 183.7 divided by 9 on the top. So if we do that division, we get 20.4111. Again, I'm taking it out to four decimal places and rounding at the end. On the bottom, we still have 25.0249. And the last thing for us to do is to divide 25.0249 into 20.4111. And if we do that, we get 0.8156, or rounding to two decimal places, we get 0.82. So our R, or our correlation coefficient for this data set, is 0.82. Now, of course, this is positive. We don't have a negative sign, so we know that this is a positive correlation, which means both variables are increasing together. The next thing we can tell by this is it's actually quite large. 0.82 is uh, a quite large correlation. However, we don't know whether or not this is significant or not until we compare it until to the critical R value. So looking in the table in the book, we need to figure out what the critical R value is. In the table, we look up based on degrees of freedom, which in this case, the degrees of freedom should be n minus 2. That's what we use for looking up the critical R. In this case, our n is 10, so 10 minus 2 is equal to 8. So the degrees of freedom we'll be using here is 8, and we should be looking at it at the 0.05 level and for the two-tailed test. And if we do that, we look that up in our book, uh, the critical R value is 0.632. So our R value, or correlation coefficient, needs to be larger than 0.632 for our, our correlation to be significant. And as we can see, it is. Our calculated R, again, was 0.82, which is indeed larger than our critical value of R, which is 0.632. So that means that we reject the null hypothesis, which of course means there is no relationship, and we accept the alternative. This is a significant correlation, meaning there is a significant relationship between x and y. The last thing we may want to look at uh, using our correlation coefficient is the coefficient of determination. The coefficient of determination gives us an idea of how much variance in y can be predicted by x. And all that actually is is r squared. So if we take 0.82 and square it, we get 0.67 or what we refer to as 67%. That means 67% of the variance in Y, or 67% of the variance in exam scores, can be accounted for by X, or the number of hours studied. So that means that there could possibly be other things playing a role, of course, up to 33%, that extra variance that's left over. So this is how you would go about calculating the basic R, or the Pearson's correlation coefficient.